And good afternoon, YouTube community, guys and girls. It's your boy Lex Anderson here on this NFL Sunday. And this is definitely a special NFL Sunday because originally I was going to make a post about the great and legendary Kobe Bryant having his number, no, make that both numbers, retired on December 18th in L.A. in the Staples Center against the Golden State Warriors. And, you know, I'm thinking... There was all this fan debate. What number should be retired? Eight or 23? And you know what? I got my Lakers fitted cap looking good on the number eight in NBA authentic jersey only, of course. But since it's Sunday, I figured we're going to swap it out for my authentic Kobe Bryant jersey. Gonna wear my Sunday's best on this one. The Mamba, lethal weapon when he was number eight. Number 24, the stats are just as good. Here it is, woo! So, when they retire Kobe Bryant's number on December 18th, wear both jersey numbers. Let me pull, pull up both jerseys. Look at that. I'm gonna wear the 24, but I'm gonna keep the eight by my side. Or depending on how they do the ceremony, I'll wear both jerseys that night. And guess what? Speaking of Golden State Warriors, POTUS number 45 rescinds an offer to Curry and the Golden State Warriors that was never on the table that he's no longer welcome at the White House. Wow, thank you very much number 45. Thank you very much POTUS for your pettiness taking to Twitter, letting us know that you're taking away an offer from a player that was never going to go in the first place. Special shout out to LeBron James standing behind Stephen Curry calling POTUS number 45 a bum, which he is. And you're right, I would even turn down the invitation to the White House because I would never want to be standing near his face. Good job, LeBron James, for using your social media presence to talk back on it. And speaking of no, number 45, look at all this chaos that is currently raining across the field and stadiums in the NFL. Wow. But let's not act surprised. We know that this is who Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is clearly in love with his political slash celebrity status. Look at all the retweets. Look at all the comments on him talking about how NFL owners need to fire or suspend their players. Really? Wow. Like, he really shows his ignorance. Like, you, first of all, you can't even fire people who work in a union. NFL Players Union? union, NFLPA? Ever heard of that, number 45? Probably not, because you seem to be ignorant on a lot of topics, including making up fictitious countries in Africa. Like, it goes on and on with this guy. So now... My concern is that Colin Kaepernick still doesn't have a job in the NFL as the owners rush to put out these statements that they don't stand behind Donald Trump and his views, his divisive, dividing views of hatred, ignorance, and nonsense. But guess what? Six NFL owners gave Trump a million dollars for his political run. Uh, Woody ha Johnson, excuse me, of the New York Jets, Robert Kraft, New England Patriots. Let's be real here. The NFL is made up exclusively of rich white billionaires. You want to have Rex Ryan talking about how on ESPN, how caught off guard and how appalled he is at the comments he made. What are you talking about? You're a Trump supporter. You can't be playing this, I'm a Trump supporter, but yet I'm appalled that he's saying these kind of things and how you work with great guys in the locker room, blah, blah, BS, I say. Okay? And let's also talk about just how unifying this is across America, you know, that the players are using their platform to speak on the social injustice that's going on across America, but now... Trump obviously being the petty-minded fool that he is, because remember, 
Trump also once tried to buy an NFL team, the Buffalo Bills, and he was turned down. He was rejected. He was looked down upon by the owners. So it only makes sense that Trump take their money and then stab them in the back by threatening them to fire and suspend their players or telling fans if you're at a game and you see a player take a knee to leave the stadium. How about this? If you really want to hit their pockets, don't go to the game, period. Don't buy any tickets. And then he makes fun of their falling ratings or their low ratings. Like, this guy is a clown. It just doesn't stop with him. And clearly there's no end in sight because he has no mental sense of decorum in regards to this. Me, however, being a fan of the game, I believe that, you know, the players should voice their political stance. Uh, however, a stadium, an NFL stadium, you are a player for an NFL team. So, you know, each team should have their own set of rules that define what's acceptable in regards to the stance that players are taking, be it the raised fist, the knee, or sitting down. You know, so Trump is right. The owners do have a right to say what can and can't be done. But at the end of the day, you know, the NFL isn't suppressing the voices of the majority of African-American players. And, you know, speaking of stats, let's call it what it is. 83, roughly 80 to 83% of the NFL's fan base is white. More than 20% of those people are Republicans. However, you have 80 to 85% of NFL players who are African Americans. And I remember roughly four years ago, there was a study about who the typical Super Bowl fan is. And the typical Super Bowl fan is not African American. The average Super Bowl fan is a middle-aged white man between 45 and 55 with an income of 70,000 plus because who else could afford those Super Bowl tickets to stay in hotels or suites or the corporate skyboxes it is what it is but number 45 has shown how hateful and divisive he truly is. So I as a fan, as a humanitarian, as an African American man, I'm proud to see the players taking a stance. Chris Paul, LeBron James, Odell Beckham, when he caught a touchdown, he raised his fists. Uh, the Steelers, you know, how about that? Didn't even come out the locker room and that was a sight that me as a fan, I thought I would never see um, a team not on the sidelines you know, a part of me is happy about the protest, but a part of me is saddened that it's 2017 and the black and white race, racial divide still exists. And it, I'm not even going to say stronger than ever because it's always been there. It's just that now with social media and platforms like YouTube where we could speak about it and try to find some collective, a collective bargaining agreement of the minds as to what's wrong and what's right and how we can move forward as human beings to treat each other better here in America. You know, I still stand when I go to the Yankee games. I stand during the seventh inning stretch and I, would, I will always stand because I know some veterans. I know uh, members of the military. I know police officers. So I do it out of respect for the people I know to stand. Uh, but it's sad that in 2017, we have a long ways to go when it comes to race relations in America. I'm also hearing or reading that the Oakland Raiders will either be all kneeling or they'll all be in the locker room. And we're talking about Sunday night football here, so now all of America is going to get to see this. It's one thing where you see it locally if you have a TV package or hopefully you have NFL Red Zone which is what I'm watching because I need to see every score across the nation, which is also why my eyes have strayed a little bit to the side because, uh, you know, we're down to the last minute in these 1 o'clock games and we're right now hanging to the 4 o'clock, 425, 430 games. So that's my take on it. Uh, Trump, 
you know, number 45 getting at it on the NBA side, and he's getting at it on the NFL side. So, uh, you know, there's definitely a big conflict of interest, though, when, again, all but one NFL owner is a white man and presumably presumably a billionaire because if you own an NFL team yeah you're definitely in the hundreds of millions if not billions like Jerry Jones would know right with his wonderful stadium well that is all I have for today I dressed my best wear my Sunday white for you guys and girls I would think that you know I try to keep the sports spectrum separate from the political spectrum but thanks to number 45, we are now converging, and I am definitely here to say and voice my opinion on what's going on, on top of just, on top of recaps and highlights and just throwing out stats. I'm a human being. I have to have a humanitarian approach and talk about what is going on in sports and in America. And a subscription from you, the American public, would be the greatest way that you could prove to me and to everyone out there in America that you're taking a stance for what is right. And it's right that you hit that subscribe button there on the left of the video and subscribe and drop down, drop a like too. Subscribe and like. It'll only take five seconds of your time. And if you've sat through this video, you've definitely taken the time. So complete your journey. Welcome to the Sports Opinion Log. This is me, your boy Lex Anderson. Uh, I was going to put the hat on, but you know what they say about wearing hats indoors, so we're going to take the hat off, which is why we're just being carefree on this Sunday. Politics and sports. We are uniting. We are converging. Everyone has something to say, and I will be here to speak on the behalf of the American people. Until next time, America, YouTube community. This is your boy Lex Anderson and I'm signing out.